Okay, wow. Creighton was incredible in this game. UConn also very much not close to their ceiling. But uh, in my opinion, this was about a Creighton team playing phenomenally offensively at home in a crazy environment. 85 to 66, final score. Creighton, who was a three-point underdog coming into this game, uh, gets a statement win, looking like a team that is clicking at the right time. UConn, 24 and 3 now, still at the top of the Big East by two games in the loss column. Don't think this is going to seriously shift any of their goals as far as regular season championships are concerned. Uh, but maybe something to be concerned about going forward, depending on how you interpreted this loss cart. What did you see? How concerned are you for UConn going forward because of a blowout loss to Creighton? Um, you know, I, I don't think that there is any, I don't think there's any shame in losing to uh, Creighton on the road. I, I don't think so. Especially the way that Creighton has been playing basketball right now. I think the blowout portion though, it makes you feel a little bit uneasy. At least it makes me feel uneasy. The fact that this was a blowout loss um, is something that I'm, I'm not saying like ring the alarm, but I I just don't, I don't think that the, the blowout portion of it is, is something that uh, makes you feel good. And look, Creighton put on a masterclass of an offensive performance and it would have took a, a masterclass offensive performance from UConn to even be in this game. I mean, Creighton shot 55% from the field, 50% from three. They made 14 of them. Like you just, it, it's going to be tough when you, you, you know, run into a team that is shooting that hot. Um, but with that said, uh, it's it's not like the world is flipped upside down. UConn is not a final four level team. They are, they still are, but the blowout portion of it, of that being a loss, doesn't make me feel good about as good as I did about UConn. Yeah. I I mean, obviously you want to at least say, if you're going to lose a game, like make it competitive. And um, for the first 20 minutes, I thought UConn did Creighton had the crazy run at the end of the first half where I, uh, well, I think it was, well, it was Ashworth. I think he hit the big three from like NBA range to get it to five. And then it felt like it snowballed from there. Um, look, I, I know there's probably going to be some Purdue fans that tap in to watch this video. And I think we're going to do a larger Purdue UConn conversation at some point this week, either for the podcast or separately. But um, I did see a lot, like we follow a lot of Purdue fans and I felt like the narrative after this game from Purdue fans was like, haha, see, they're just like us. And I, th I guess that's fair. Like, I, I think these two teams are similar in caliber, Purdue and UConn. I I've never felt they weren't. I don't think UConn losing to Creighton is similar to Purdue losing to Ohio State. Uh, and I don't want to make this recap about Purdue, but if there is a comparison, like this reminded me of Purdue's loss to Nebraska more than anything, where a team at home in the state of Nebraska, by the way, just shot the lights out. Like, what, what are you supposed to do when Creighton – makes 14 threes the way they did in this game. And Ashworth got cold late. It could have been worse. Um, you look through the the guys, like one, one eye test thing that happened to me with Creighton, we know their top four are good, right? I was screaming about it to you in the preview and yesterday, like Ashworth is a new player today than he was a month ago. And Kalk is one of the best bigs in the country. Alexander is a bucket getter. Shireman's a superstar. You add Ashworth to that, new Ashworth, like th this top four offensively to me is the best top four any team can offer. And that includes Purdue and UConn. The weak spot for Creighton has always been their fifth guy. And I test to me, their fifth guys were awesome in this game. Like Farabella was like no look passing for dunks. Uh, Mason Miller had some huge moments. Jason Green, first time I've even noticed him this season. Eight points, three for four from the floor. Those three guys I just mentioned combined to go six for nine from three. That becomes the out of body. I don't think that's going to happen again. Like, I don't think we're going to do a Creighton recap again this season where we say Miller, Farabello, and Jason Green went six for nine from three. But everything else Creighton did in this game was sustainable to me. Like, the way Ashworth played, the way he stretched the defense, the way Alexander was able to get to his spots, Call really being the best big in this game. I know we we talked about that in the pregame, but uh, Kalk four blocks in this game. He had more points than Klingon. Um, Klingon did pick up two early fouls, so that was part of this. But man, Kalk is just really versatile. And then Shireman, the fact that he's the fourth name I'm mentioning, I think he's their best all around offensive player. 
they are a monster that can make a final four run that honestly can win a national championship. If they have Ashworth and the, the bench playing like this, and that's the takeaway here. Do I wish UConn was more competitive? Yes. But this game was about Creighton being awesome way more than it was anything being different about UConn than we thought. Yeah. And I mean, you mentioned it, the other guys of Creighton, they got eight, eight, six. So what was that? 16, six, 24 points from that. Or sorry, 22 points from the other guys, call it bench, whatever you want to say. Then you look over at UConn, they get four. Like, and that's and that's coming off games where they're getting stuff from Samson Johnson or getting stuff from Ball, they're getting stuff from Diara, who's been great recently. I believe he had like 12 or 14 points in that Marquette game. And uh yeah, you you just, you know, this they they ran to a buzzsaw, like you said. And I think that's a good shout by you to compare it to the Purdue and uh, Nebraska game, but that's not about that. To me, this is about this Creighton team. I don't think it's a one-off thing to me. I think like, I know I've seen some things out there. It's like, Oh, this Creighton team, they hit shots. They good. They, they miss shots bad. No, I don't really think that's it. I think they always hit shots to be honest with you. <laughs> it's just that they need one other guy. They need that one other guy to step up or that other, that fifth guy to kind of pick up the slack. And if you did like a month, to month split on what you got from Steven Ashworth, one of the biggest developments of the season for them, because we were all talking about the trend of, okay, these guys that transfer up, they need a year. The Tyson Walkers of the world, uh, the Jameer Youngs of the, like they need that one more year usually to step up in year two and they're special. Ashworth has turned the corner in year one of being there. So it's like uh, that's a major development for this Creighton basketball team. And look, for all the things they say about this team just being like a, a get hot team and a hit shots, Kalk is one of the best defensive bigs in the country. He probably is the best defensive big in the country, to yeah. be honest with you. Um, and he's an anchor, and they had that. And Trey Alexander is a good on-ball defender. And, you know, Ashworth is little, but that, that happens, okay? He can't do anything about that. Baylor Shireman, definitely a negative defender. Also a bona fide bucket on every single night. He's giving you, at worst, 15, 5, and 5. That's kind of what his worst night is. Uh, he had an off game in this game, I would say. Only seven attempts. He had 12, 7, and 6. Like, that's Baylor Shireman. You're going to get that. This Creighton team is not a get hot, shoot it, win games type team, get cold, lose games. They're a they're a good basketball team. They just need that one other guy. And yeah. they've been getting that as of late. And it's it's been leading to success. I love that from you. I agree completely. It's not a team where, oh man, they can get hot and make things interesting. It's right. That, that's this that's disrespectful for them. Like that's that's like calling them Nebraska. They're not yeah. Nebraska. And I'm sorry for Nebraska catching a stray in this. They're not a gimmick get hot team they yeah. they stay hot <laughs> they just need to, well, no, they need other guys to me it's to me it's if they're hot you're done like that's they're they're so dangerous that if they're hitting shots it's over and if they're not hitting shots then okay you got a game like that's i i don't think there's going to be games where creighton doesn't hit shots and they lose by 30 because they didn't hit shots they have enough substance to them that they're going to hang regardless it's yeah if they hit shots good luck it's over um, and that's what happened tonight. Like once, once they got on that run where Ashworth hit the, the wide open step back NBA range, it snowballed against the best team that we've seen in the country this year. You can debate Purdue and UConn, like we said, but, uh, at least coming into this game, it, it felt fair to say that UConn's the best team in the country. Not tonight, not against Creighton. Uh, we're not going to let UConn off that easy. Cam Spencer, whole lot of shit talk. Ben Gold's way. Nothing tonight. Six points, three for eight from the floor. Uh, I mean, he's been a star this season. He, to me, was the worst UConn offensive player in this game. Um, they needed more from him, and they didn't get it. What did you see from Spencer, and do you make of uh, anything of that that is concerning going forward beyond just one bad game? Uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to call it just one bad game for Spencer moving forward, but this UConn team is hitting on all cylinders and dangerous when it just isn't one guy. Like, to me, this was not in the blowout fashion, but, like, the loss fashion is that game that they played at Kansas. It was Tristan Newton carrying them to stay in the game 
Didn't really get anything from anybody else in that basketball game. In this game, Tristan Newton was doing everything he could. I mean, he had 27, 12, and four in this game, and they lost by and they lost by 20. They they need things from other guys. If I had to pinpoint it, I'm not putting it all on one guy because I think Cam Spencer can play better. I think honestly, a lot of guys can play it better. Castle has been playing a lot better as of late. He can play better. I I am starting to get not concerned, but there's been a string of games where Caravan has not necessarily played up to his ability. Like Caravan unlocks a different level for this team as like the four man who can get you 12 to 14 points, rebound the basketball, and you know, uh knock down three point shots and score like he he's a guy that they need like 12 and 8 12 and 6 for or maybe like there's been games where he's got 20 there's been games where he's got 15 and 6 like he's that type of guy and I just think he's kind of on a he's in a rut right now and they need to they definitely need to get him going because I think Caravan is kind of he's not the best player whatsoever but he is a guy that can unlock things for other guys on this team yeah that was your best four in the country you've always been adamant about that i i, I still I, I think he, he hasn't been playing like it but i still think he is okay interesting uh yeah i don't know i uh we're gonna do a whole like i said we're gonna do a purdue yukon thing for later this week but i uh, just want to make a quick point we were making comparisons to gonzaga and baylor from 21 where it's like there's clearly two teams ahead of the pack this was a bad week for that comparison because Gonzaga and Baylor combined for one regular season loss that year. And we've now got three losses for Purdue, three losses for UConn. Look, I still think these are the two best teams in the country, but uh, you can play whose loss is worse. You can play that game. The reality is the gap is not as large, not between Purdue versus UConn, but between Purdue and UConn and the rest of the country. That's my takeaway from this week. Like both these teams, as good as they are at their best, will run through every team in the sport. They're not infallible like they, they are gettable even even when they're not off their or uh on their a plus game like they are they're gettable both purdue and uconn and uh that should make for an interesting march for sure uh hmm, anything else from this game i want to talk to you in a separate video about hurley and his uh departure from the arena anything else that you want to hit on before we jump out of here because you said you don't want to compare losses i just want to get this out there verbally there is something very different about losing at Creighton and losing at Ohio State with a new head ball coach to a bottom tier team in the Big Ten. I just want to throw that out there. I also am all here for victory lapping other fan bases. I have done that before, but at the same time, let's 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 not lie to ourselves here. If you want more thoughts on that, we're going to do a longer form video on the dynamic between Purdue and UConn these days. Um, the new dynamic, the, the dynamic that's formed of the last like two weeks for some reason. Uh, the la last 12 hours, really. Um, but yeah, hey, congratulations, Creighton. That was a great performance. Uh, how far does Creighton go in March? We just did our tiers. If you had to put a prediction on it, right? Now. That looked like a Final Four team yesterday, for sure. Yeah, that looked, yeah, that looked, it did. It looked like a Final Four team. Is that where you're going? Like, would you put them in there right now? I'm not going to get all the way there. I'm going to get them losing the Elite Eight. Oh, okay. I'll see. I'm uh, I'm falling for it again. We'll find out. Uh, good one. It, subscribe to the Sleepers channel. See all our previews and recaps this season, by the way. Uh, we'll have more for this weekend.